Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. This is AP Physics Chapter 1, Video 5. Uh, today's topic is components of vectors. Objectives for today are be able to determine the components of a given vector. Components of vectors. Manipulating vectors graphically is insightful but difficult when striving for numeric accuracy. Vector components provide a numeric method of representation. Any vector is built from x components and y components. So this is what it means. If I have x vector ax and a vector ay, I can build a vector a. a is ax vector ax plus a vector ay. Similarly, any vector can be decomposed into its x components using a times cosine theta and its y components using a times sine theta. Notice this theta is the angle of the vector a sweeps out from zero degrees, has to be from zero degrees. And sweeps out means counterclockwise. So here is theta counterclockwise. Okay, so here is ax equals a cosine theta, ay equals a sine theta. This uh, relationship are derived from Sokotoa relationships. The sign of the component depends on the angle from zero degrees. So here are two examples, vector b and vector c. What are the signs for bx and by? Let's take a look at theta. Theta is greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees. That means b is in quadrant 2. In this case, y is positive and x is negative. Now, in this case, uh, example B, theta is bigger than 180, less than 270. So the vector is in third quadrant. In this case, C, both Cx and Cy are negative. Example 1.6, what are the x and y components of vector D? Here's vector D. The magnitude of vector is D is 3 meters and angle alpha is 45 degrees. So we use dx equals d cosine alpha, which is 3 times cosine negative 45. Well, how did I get negative 45 here instead of positive? Because you are sweeping out clockwise. Remember, x has to, theta should be counterclockwise is positive, clockwise is negative. That's where negative 45 is coming from. So you have a positive value. Similarly, you do dy, you have a negative value, you can evaluate. It's in fourth quadrant, x should be positive and y should be negative. Example B, what are the x, y components of vector E? The magnitude of vector is E equals to 4.5 meters and the angle beta equals 37 degrees. So let's take a look. Hmm, this question is a little bit different because the x is still kind of pointing to the right, but y, positive y, is down. So we can't really use cosine alpha or sine alpha. It would be diff difficult. So how do we solve this uh, problem? So we use Sokotoa, right? So this ey is adjacent. Remember, adjacent is cosine. ex is the same as opposite. So in this case, ex is a sine, ey is cosine. So EX is sine because it's opposite, 4.5 times sine 37 degrees. So you have a positive value. EY is cosine because it's adjacent. It's 4.5 times cosine 37. So you have positive 3.59 meters. Vector calculations using components. Let's take a look. Vector A and B. A plus B equals to R. So we can add these two vectors. Doesn't matter what the angle is, we can use components to find a result. How do we do that? Following the uh, four steps. Step one, resolve each vector into x and y components. ax equals a cosine theta, ay equals a sine theta. Similarly for bx, by, if you have c or d, you just keep doing it. Next, you add x components together to get rx. That is the x component of the resultant vector. And you add all the y components to get ry. Next, you calculate 
uh, the magnitude of the resultant using Pythagorean theorem. So r equals the square root of rx squared plus ry squared. Lastly, to find a direction, you use inverse 10. In this equation, you use absolute value of R, ry over rx. Because the direction of the vector sum can be determined by looking at individual components. So if you have the, a value, you know this angle is formed with x components, right? Could it be negative or positive. So you, you will have a sense of the direction. Multiplying a vector by a scalar. Multiplying a vector by a positive scalar changes the magnitude of the vector, but not its direction. So d equals to 2a, that means you uh, elongate this a by two times, and direction is still the same as a. So 2a is twice as long as a, and in the same direction as a. So dx is 2ax, dy equals to 2ay. So basically, you just multiply by the components by 2. What if you have to multiply a vector by a negative scalar quantity? Now the magnitude changes by the same factor, but the direction is reversed. For example, here is a. Now, how do you, what is d equals a negative 3a? Now the direction has to be opposite to a. Magnitude is 3 times as big as a, right? Negative 3a is 3 times as long as a, and it points in the opposite direction as a. So you again multiply each component by negative 3. Let's take a look at this example 1.7. Three players are brought to the center of a large flat field. Each is given a meter stick, a compass, a calculator, a shovel, and the following three displacements. Here's vector A, vector B, vector C. The three displacements lead to the point where the keys to a new Porsche are buried. So two players start measuring immediately. But the winner first calculates where to go. What does she calculate? So basically, this is question asking you the result in a vector. To find a result in a vector, we have to find each individual vector, right? The given each individual vector A, this is a magnitude 72.4 at 58 degrees. How did I get 58 degrees over here? It says 32. Let's take a look. Remember, all the angles are from the zero degrees, measured from zero degrees. This 32 is measured from Y. So over here, this is from 0 degrees. This angle equals to 90 minus 32. Therefore, you have 58 degrees. Vector B over here is giving you 36 degrees. But from the positive 0 direction or positive x direction, that the whole angle should be 180 plus 36, hence 216 degrees. Similarly, vector C is 207 degrees because it's going downward. So over here is zero. So you start from here and all the way around 270. So how do we add vectors? First, you have to find components of AX, AY, BX, BY, CX, CY. Right? Uh, by substituting numbers into the equations. Next, you add all the X together and all the Y's together. What's the next step? Uh, Pythagorean theorem. This gives you the magnitude, how long it is. Next step, you find a direction, use inverse 10. Remember, we only use the magnitude, not a direction. So it's 9.92 divided by 7.99. So you have 51.2 degrees. Where is this 51.2? Where is this? That is this angle. Okay, right over here is 51.2 degrees. So how do you describe this resultant? The resultant has a magnitude of 12.7 meters. What is this theta? Theta is 128.8 degrees. How did I get that? This is um, obtained by subtracting 51.2 degrees from 180 degrees. Or you can say it's at 51.2 degrees north of west, because 51 degrees is from the west going to the north. Next example, 
After an airplane takes off, it travels 10.4 kilometers west, 8.7 kilometers north, and 2.1 kilometers up. How far is it from the taking off point? How far means only the magnitude. So here you'll have three vectors. AX is negative because it's west. Y up are going to the north positive and up is also positive. So to find a resultant, you use Pythagorean theorem. You add everything together, you should have 30.7 kilometers. Remember in the textbook or uh, test, we use three sig figs. Last one, test your understanding. Two vectors A and B both lie in the X, Y plane. Is it possible for A to have the same magnitude as B but a different components? Is that possible? The answer is yes. Because A and B can have the same magnitude but a different component if they point in a different direction. Take a look at this. This is your coordinate. So here is A and B it looks like they have the same magnitude, but the components obviously are different, you can, as you can see. Question B, is it possible for A to have the same components as B, but a different magnitude? Well, if A has the same components as B, that means A and B are the same. No, because A and B have the same components, that means they are the same. So they, they have the same magnitude. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.